1954, the sliding filament theory was developed separately by two individual groups, the first consisting of Andrew F. Huxley and Rolf Niedergerk, and the second consisting of Hugh Huxley and Jean Hansen. Although the groups did not work together or know the other group existed, they both came to the same conclusion about muscle contraction, and their findings were each posted on the same newspaper on the same day. The sliding filament theory is the better known term for this process that the groups came up with and it explains how exactly our skeletal muscles, the muscles attached to our bones, which allow us to move, are able to contract or shorten and relax. Skeletal muscles consist of muscle fibers, which consist of myofibrils, which consist of myofilaments. According to this theory, sarcomeres, located in the myofibrils, contract and relax to create muscle movement because of an interaction between two myofilaments, the protein actin and the protein myosin. Inside the sarcomere, these two proteins occur in layers with a single strand of myosin in between many strands of actin. The amount of strands of actin depends on what the muscle is. We will be only making one strand of actin and myosin for our model. To prevent actin and myosin from interacting with each other while the muscle is at rest, troponin and tropomyosin, proteins in the actin strands, keep the two separated. Broken ATP molecules attach to the heads of the myosin proteins and give them energy. This energy is stored in the heads of myosin. The process of a muscle contraction starts with the activation of a muscle by motor neurons, which are nerve cells located in the brain stem. The signal travels down to a neuron synapse, where the neurotransmitters then transport the signal into a muscle cell. This in turn sets off another action potential inside the muscle cell. The action potential travels along the muscle cell's membrane, then enters it through the T tubules. When the signal reaches the sarcoplasmic reticulum inside the cell, it instructs the calcium pumps to open and allow the stored calcium ions to enter the sarcomere. The calcium ions attach to the troponin proteins and rotate around the actin proteins, moving the tropomyosin. A binding site where the myosin heads and the actin can interact with each other is then exposed. With the help of the energy provided from the broken ATP molecules, the myosin proteins bend towards the center of the sarcomere and drag the actin strands toward each other. This interaction is what allows the sarcomere to shrink, causing the muscle to contract. To stop the contraction, new ATP molecules come and attach to the heads of the myosin. This will allow one of the three phosphates in the ATP molecules to release its energy. As soon as the ATP molecules and the myosin touch, the bond between the myosin and actin is broken, and the myosin heads then retract to their original spots. As the myosin and actin are being separated, the sarcoplasmic reticulum pumps all of the calcium ions out of the sarcomere so they can be stored for the next impulse. This allows for the troponin and tropomyosin to retake their positions around the actin strands and resets the sarcomere for the next impulse to come along.